Uh, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me to present my research work. Uh, my topic is Max VIT unit. It's a segmentation framework based on the multi-axis attention uh, network. And it is very suitable for medical image segmentation as well as other applications of segmentation. First of all, the layout of uh, this talk. Uh, first, I'm going to discuss the novelty of this work, then the brief introduction of what is image segmentation, what is semantic segmentation, then how do we use this for medical image segmentation, uh, image segmentation and cancer analysis, as well as histopathology and cancer analysis. And then the two famous architecture, the unit framework for segmentation and the vision transformer for the segmentation uh, problem. Uh, a very recent uh, architecture, MaxVIT Vision Transformer, which was used for classification and detection, that will be discussed. And then our own new MaxVIT unit type of segmentation framework. Uh, for this, we also propose the new decoder architecture, so we are going to discuss that. Then uh, testing our new framework on some challenging data sets, uh, competition-based data sets, results and conclusions. First of all, the novelty of our proposed work, uh, we propose a new hybrid image segmentation framework named MaxVIT unit. And it is inspired by the unit encoder decoder structure. So basically it's an auto encoder where we compress the features into information rich feature. We get the bottleneck features and then we decompress it or upscale it in the decoder in order to get the segmented mass. The proposed hybrid decoder block consists of two steps. So for this decoder, we proposed decoder blocks and these blocks are being repeated. Each block consists of two steps. The merging step where bottom decoder features are concatenated with the skip path features. And then we have a fusion step where max VIT blocks are used to efficiently fuse the concatenated information. The proposed hybrid decoder is made by simply repeating the decoder block uh, it is designed to be parameter efficient and computationally lightweight without compromising on the segmentation performance. And the local as well as global attention mechanism that we exploited in the proposed decoder helps in learning information rich features for high quality image segmentation. So basically local as well as global features are learned and these are exploited in order to segment the image pixel wise. Image segmentation, the basics of image segmentation. Image segmentation partitions an image into multiple parts or region and often based on the characteristic of the pixels in the image. There are three types of image segmentation. One is semantic image segmentation that we are focusing on. The other is instance segmentation whereby even the different example of the same classes are differentiated. Like these two humans are differentiated. In semantic, they are just classified into a single class two humans or three humans in the image will be classified into a single class. So it is class-based segmentation and this is even the instance-based segmentation. And then we have the panoptic segmentation whereby even importance is given to the background information as well. Semantic segmentation continued a deep learning technique to assign a label to each pixel in an image. So for, uh, for, for semantic segmentation, we are going to use a deep learning technique that will assign or classify each pixel in an image. That is identifying the object or seeing that the pixel belongs to. So for example, over here, we have many fruits in the bowl. So pear, plum, apple, and the different uh, uh, fruits are being classified into their classes. So semantic segmentation algorithm uses convolutional neural network CNNs or VITs, the vision transformer, to learn the features of different objects and scenes in a supervised way. Semantic segmentation continued. Uh, semantic segmentation has a wide range of applications, including autonomous driving to identify objects on the road, such as cars, pedestrians, and traffic signs, and then even in robotics to help robots understand their surrounding. And similarly, in crack detection or anomaly detection to identify cracks and defects in the machinery and uh, airplanes. Now, how we exploit this semantic segmentation for medical analysis? That is medical image segmentation. Semantic segmentation 
is a powerful tool for medical image analysis because it is used to identify different tissues and organs in a medical images and thus to help the doctors in diagnosing diseases and plan treatments. Popular algorithm for segmentation, UNET, Deep Lab V3, and Mask RCNN. Medical image segmentation continued. The benefits of semantic segmentation in medical imaging include increased, increased accuracy of diagnosis, improved planning of treatments, reduced risk of errors, and increased efficiency. Just to give you an example of the nuclei segmentation, whereby our aim is to segment the nuclei uh, of the tissue. So, for example, we give the different input images. The deep neural network algorithm tries to segment these uh, objects in each image, like these ones shown over here. So, the, the body or structure or morphology of the cell is also being provided. Now we discussed uh, the segmentation framework and for that medical image segmentation and cancer analysis that is that particular framework was semantic segmentation based framework that we proposed is used over here and tested over here for cancer analysis. So a brief discussion of cancer analysis. Cancer is a leading cause of death worldwide. We know that and cancer prediction shows dramatic increase at four HDI levels. HDI means human development index levels. So therefore accurate and timely tumor detection is very important treatment. Uh, in this particular graph, the HDI is shown on the X axis and the number of cases in millions that is the cancer occurrence in millions is shown on the y-axis and we see that the percentage increase at the different HDI levels is quite high and that's why the the cancer analysis is becoming more and more important. Traditionally histopathology is considered a very authentic uh, uh, technique for cancer analysis. We know that histopathology is the study of microscopic anatomy of tissues and it's a valuable tool for cancer analysis. So we have tissues and uh, we studied the, uh, the, this tissue okay, through the microscope. Histopathology allows pathologists to identify and classify cancer cells and it involves five key steps that is the collection of the tissue, preparation of tissue for histology, chemical fixation, frozen section processing, staining of the proposed histology slide. The staining part is very important. So, now the question is what is the classical histopathology workflow? First of all, patient screening is performed through x-ray or any other technique and if there is some problem, so biopsy is taken, that is tissue sample from that particular organ is taken, that tissue sample is put on a slide and the tissue slide is studied under the microscope by the pathologist and this is a tedious and time-consuming step uh, however the pathologist gives a report at the end of the day now the limitations of manual histopathology uh, we know that pathologists manually detect and count nuclear regions on a glass slide under a microscope however the pathological workflow is uh, that is expertise and experience is required it is extremely laborious it is time consuming it is also error prone and it is a subjective measure because there is intra observer disagreement up to 7% maybe inter observer disagreement and also the results are difficult to reproduce thus this uh, gives us a hint of the automated histopathology so we need to have automated histopathology where we, uh, whereby we have now digital scanners available. We scan the tissue slide and we get the whole slide images. These are very big images, maybe 50,000 by 50,000 pixels. We take the region of interest uh, from these uh, whole slide images. Now this part can also be uh, uh, done using machine learning algorithms. And once the region of interest are taken, again machine learning models are applied on these region of interest in order to analyze the cancer uh, uh, cells and their counts. So we need to have automated cancer analysis system. And for that purpose, deep learning has emerged as a powerful tool for medical image analysis, including cancer detection and diagnosis. The goal is then to develop an automated cancer analysis system using deep learning, focusing on segmentation of nuclear region in histopathology images. So 
we need to have a deep learning mechanism that detects nuclear region in the histopathology images. And these uh, images are very complex in nature, so detecting nuclei is not a simple uh, challenge over here. And that's what's stated over here. The automated system should be robust to color variation in the images, uh, variation in nuclear shape, even the variation due to magnification and even the variation due to organ type because cancer can uh, occur in different organs of the body and those would have different image structure. Also, the system should be uh, accurate and fast enough to act as second opinion for the pathologist. So cancer analysis uh, is uh, performed in number of ways. For example, we say that number of Myers to analyze cancer, like lymphocyte detection, mitosis, the cell division detection and analysis, and even the nuclei detection. In this particular work, we are focusing on the nuclei detection. Now we discuss the unit segmentation framework because uh, these uh, unit segmentation framework are very popular in for image segmentation, specifically semantic image segmentation. It is in form of autoencoder, that is we have an encoder in this form. Then we have the bottleneck layer, the information rich features are available over, over here. And then we have the decoder. Okay, So the decoder basically uh, takes this uh, these information rich features and try to upsample or decompress and segment the overall objects in the images at this particular stage. Also a little bit uh, discussion of the vision transformer architecture because we have been using vision transformer architecture for this. So original image is divided into patches, linear projection and flattened patches we obtain and then these are uh, concatenated with the position of the patches and then given to the transformer encoder. Okay, the details of the transformer encoder are as such that we have normalization, the multi-head attention, then again normalization and an MLP. Now this uh, block of the encoder can be repeated L times. Okay. The details of the Max VIT Vision Transformer which uh, was reported uh, in 2022. It's a very good architecture mainly used for classification and detection. So we have input, uh, we perform convolution, again convolution and then we have the Max VIT block. Uh, the second max VIT block, third, fourth, and then pooling fully connected layer and output. Each max VIT block is consisted of three uh, sub blocks, the mobile convolution block, the block attention where local characteristics are learned, the grid attention where global characteristics of the image are learned. Here uh, the example of the block attention and grid attention whereby block attention as you see that the pink color is locally uh, situated okay and the receptive field is small over here not the whole image similarly the green patch has its own receptive field so this is called block attention single block attention however in grid attention we see that the pink uh, blocks as well as the green blue and yellow blocks they are all distributed so for example the receptive field of the pink block is uh, uh, quite large uh, even equal to the size of this patch so block attention uh, learns the local characteristic uh, of the image while well, grid attention tries to learn the global characteristic and thus we both uh, uh, exploit both these local and global characteristics. Now the new architecture that we propose that is the max VIT unit segmentation framework so it has an encoder okay, inputted image is coming and we have the encoder structure we get the bottleneck features and then it is decompressed or scaled up through the our new proposed decoder. Okay. So you see that uh, each decoder block has uh, skip connection from the encoder as well as it has a uh, connection from the bottleneck layer or the preceding uh, decoder block. And this gives the detail of our uh, proposed decoder uh, framework. Again, the new uh, hybrid uh, decoder block. And so the skip connection information is given over here and we also have the information from the previous decoding block okay that is uh, sort of uh, upscale okay through convolution transform transpose 2d and then we have this uh, max vit block and it is repeated n times as per the requirement segmentation challenge data set and results uh, <coughs> 
we have used two uh, recent uh, segmentation challenge data set, uh, uh, Manusec 18 challenge data set and Manusec 20 challenge data set. Manusec 18 challenge data set is a binary data set which spans a range of patients, organs, and uh, it is taken from 18 hospital. The training set consists of 30 slides, 1000 by 1000, and containing about 21,600 nuclei. The magnification is 40 times for all images and the organs are breast, liver, kidney, prostate, bladder, colon, and stomach. So the HNE stained original images are shown in the first row, the boundary annotation are shown in the second, and the true boundary class map is shown in the third. So for example, we consider uh, these two as the, our ground truth because the mask or the regions are annotated by the pathologist for us during the training of the deep neural networks. Once it is trained, then we don't need these annotation and it is going to give us uh, the area of the nuclei by itself. Comparison plot uh, on Monusec 18 data set, we have uh, uh, see the dice score uh, and the number of iteration on the x-axis. Uh, we see that we have compared our approach with the very recent uh, uh, fully connected unit and SWIN and as well as uh, some other uh, recent techniques. The red curve is that of our proposed max VIT unit and we can see that it is performing very well as compared to the other network. Similarly, uh, the comparison based on the uh, uh, intersection of union metric for segmentation on the Manusec 18 data set. Uh, over here, even at this performance metric, our uh, method is performing quite well. And some quantitative results, we see that max VIT unit, the proposed technique, is giving us a dice score of 0.8378 and IOU of 0.7208, which is quite uh, better as compared to the recent techniques. Some visually uh, obtained uh, masks uh, see that uh, these are the original histo images and this second row is the ground truth, the results of UNET, SWIN unit, max VIT upper net, and then the proposed max VIT unit. And uh, see that the last row shows less number of uh, false positive shown by red color and false negative shown by blue color. Then the other challenge, we also want you to check it on a very recent challenge data set, the Manusec 20 challenge data set. It has multiple cells, not just nuclei, it has multiple cells, epithelial, lymphocyte, neutrophils, and macrophages. It has 46 images of 1000 by 1000 containing about 31,500 nuclei. And in the test case, we have 25 images uh, of almost the same size and containing about 15,500 nuclei. Magnification is 40 times for all images and the organs are breast, kidney, lung, prostate. This data set is, uh, uh, the, the challenge is not just a binary segmentation problem, rather a multi-segmentation, multi-class segmentation problem because we have four different uh, cells, epithelial, lymphocyte, neutrophils, and mega. So this is even a more challenging data set. It is a multi-class uh, segmentation problem. The details of the distribution of cell based on organ and for each organ and represent the number of patient slides for that particular organ. Here again, uh, the proposed uh, technique uh, is shown in red uh, curve and we see that its performance is high as compared to the other techniques on the uh, dice metric as well as on the IOU metric. Again quantitative results for, for this new Manusec 20 data set, the max VIT unit proposed framework has achieved a dice score of 0.8091 and IOU score of 0.6866. The visual results, that is, uh, in, in image segmentation, we uh, want to have visual results, that is, the mask are visually shown, and we see that the second row is the ground truth, and the last row is that of max VIT, our proposed framework, and we see that uh, the different color represents the different classes, and we see that it has uh, shown better performance even visually, not only quantitatively, but visually, as compared to the recent architectures. So conclusion is that, an auto encoder decoder based hybrid vision transformer architecture named max vit unit is proposed for medical image segmentation but this is not just for medical image segmentation it can be used for other segmentation applications as well
The hybrid nature of both the encoder and decoder has the ability to provide local as well as global hierarchical features at multiple scales. Our max VIT unit perform better than the unit uh, that is CNN and SWIN unit that is uh, based on transformer in terms of dice and IOE matrices. The max VIT unit semantic segmentation framework can also be used for other applications such as autonomous driving, robotics, crack detection, and ETC. Uh, the publication uh, related to this, we already have uploaded our publication on archive and it can be obtained from this particular uh, website. The title is Max VAT Unit Multi X Attention for Medical Image Segmentation. Well, thank you so much. And special thanks to the organizing committee of ICEF 2023 for inviting me and letting me uh, discuss my research work. If any questions, you can reach me at asif at rateofpayas.edu.pk. Thank you so much.